Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got a good one on tap between the visiting Houston Texans and the Cincinnati Bengals. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Houston Texans and the Cincinnati Bengals. With my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we have arrived at another new season. Had a little more pep in my step this morning. <laughs> I know you did as well. Here we go. Yeah, when you went out for your five-mile jog, you were flying. <laughs> you did it in record time because you were psyched up about this game. But let's be frank about it. No more radio shows. No more podcasts. No more just predicting what's going to happen. Now we get to see it on the field. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken very short. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Go. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by the NFL's most valuable player from 2015. It's Cam Newton. There are a number of great quarterbacks in the NFL, but I have to believe that the prototype in terms of look has to be Cam Newton. That stature and frame Almost breathtaking when you see him in person. And now he's starting to put it all together with consistency in his game. Throwing, running, leading. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And let's take a look at the Texans' offense. Obviously a tough test for this offense right out of the gate. Road game in game one of the new year. Conventional wisdom says, go slow, take care of the football. I think in this case, attack early and get the home team back on their heels. They'll run for the first time with Austin Eckler. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Draw play, it's Eckler. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. Call it a gain of four, but not enough. The punt team going to need to be summoned here on fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it. And some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. The former second-round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And he hits his target. It's Kenny Stills. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. 
Throwing here, Trubisky. He'll rifle this one, and he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down, so let's see what this is about. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain that time, but it leaves them with third and 11 coming up. Here now the offense for the Bengals. And last night we were discussing some of the changes they've made offensively during the offseason, and we know it helps for them to have the first game at home. Hopefully this crowd, which we saw coming in, They've been here for a while, ready to go. You and I should have joined the tailgates, that's for sure. They're going to give them plenty of encouragement. They'll try and ride that wave and get their first victory of the year. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 38-yard line. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 38. Now Joe Mixon. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Jadavian Clowney there on the stop. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Jadavion Clowney was the number one pick in the NFL draft, and it was with good reason. An absolute athletic freak. Now he's trying to add consistency to his game. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. From the gun, it's Trubisky. It's complete, Stills. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. This is Stills on the jet sweep, and that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. This is Mixon. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Scampering home from 19 yards out as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we've got to turn it all loose. Brett Maher on for the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 Bengals. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. First down, and they stick with Eckler. They yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Let's pick it up. 
from the 45 on second down. Newton, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. He finds his target, Fuller. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. On the ground, it's Eckler. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. With that last effort, he topples the 5,000-yard mark for his career. And that doesn't place you among the absolute greats that have ever played the game, but it's a significant achievement and a very, very solid career. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Understandable we're going to see some of this first game of the year in a penalty. Yeah, we are. And don't forget the emotion of it all as well. I mean, they've been building to this crescendo the entire offseason. So we maybe see some of this in the early part of the game. And he gets it down to the 32. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be a second down. On second down now. It's Davis. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Oh, and the hard count might have got him. This might be a first down. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know, when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. Going on the ground with Eckler. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Go, go, go. Tight into the right, boy. Tight into the right. Move. From the gun, here's Newton. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight yard line, second and goal. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. Maybe the first big test of the season here on both sides. This is third and goal. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me. I was. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. So. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now Trubisky. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Some mistakes already in the first quarter. If he holds on to that one, first down. Yeah, and I guarantee you that at least one defensive back out there has reminded him of that fact, trying to get into his head and hoping that'll affect him the rest of the game. Come on now, let's go! 
And now out comes Houston. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point. The kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about that. Toe it. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> Another throw on second down, and this one in complete as well so back to back incompletions and that has him staring at a third and ten and now the third down throw incomplete as well I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus. You know? Yeah, the mental focus. Yeah, on the that's got to stay with it. That's true. And this will be taken at the 13. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On second and 11 now, Trubisky and Stills bringing it in. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. So a first and ten now in Houston territory at the 46. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. And that's why defenders are often frustrated offensive guys. Actually made the catch, looked good doing it, but couldn't get his feet down in order to finish off the takeaway. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. This is Stills on the jet sweep. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. On second down and four, Trubisky. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. A 39-yard the kick by Marr is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to three. 
So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three, not six. Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there. 10-play drive, but they stiffened when they got close to the goal line, made them kick a field goal for the offense. 10-play drive. They might be a little disappointed they got a field goal, but they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Here's a quick hitch route, and the throw complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Here's Newton. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Running on first down, Eckler. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of seven, and it'll set him back for second down. Throwing on second and long. Newton. He gets it to Humphreys. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 35. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 56, 56, 56. From the 29, Newton throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages... When they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost, and now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. Newton now to throw, and he's in. Touchdown, Houston. From 13 yards out, as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Extra point forthcoming. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the result, a Houston touchdown. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This will be taken about the 12. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past Let's the go, 30. Let's go. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Mixing with it. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. 
And the Bengals on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. And Stills over the middle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards that time, and it's Cincinnati first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. Now they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're usually going to pick up a holding call. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Trubisky. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and a mile. Now Trubisky to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 38-yard line. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Now a first down carry for Harris. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Mixon. And he's going to be close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Texans 31. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. A handoff to Mixon. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And it'll be a second and long. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop them here on third down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening weekend. That's into the hands of the tight end, Leggett. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To the air again, Newton. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. He'll get this to Eckler. 
everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Uh, we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. But we'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had an ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Mixon with a first down carry. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On the draw, it's Harris. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. From midfield now, here's Trubisky. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. And he's going to be close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Texans 17. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. The kick by Maher is good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. 
So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Throwing is Newton. On the screen, this is Eckler. A strong running. <laughs> and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. On third down, Trubisky. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Fabian Moreau. And he will score. It's a touchdown. Well, when both guys went up for the ball, I just thought, who's going to come down with it? I didn't think he'd come down with it and then take it all the way for a touchdown. That's battling, isn't it? Because normally, if both guys go up for it and come down with it, the tie goes to the offense. The defensive player didn't want it to be a tie at all. He wanted a little bit more, took it, and went the other direction. Extra point attempt to follow here. Still second down. Now Trubisky lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now Trubisky on third and long. A bullet throw, but incomplete. 
had to pass there third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Come on, fellas. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Switch it, switch it, switch it, on, switch it. They started on the ground with Eckler. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. So that's going to push him back half the distance. They'll run here with Eckler. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Give him five yards there and it'll bring up second down. To throw on second and six, Newton. It's complete to Fuller. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. So a little breathing room now. First and ten at the 17. And they get to Newton and take him down for the sack. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. A throw out wide caught by Hopkins. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Third and long. It's Newton. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. And this one goes sailing out of bounds. Where did it cross? Well, they're going to say on this side of midfield. They'll run on first down. Mixon, and they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. On second and nine, Trubisky to the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Now they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now a pass hauled in downfield, and he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 75 yards receiving for him now. It's a first down. Trubisky now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Throwing here, Trubisky. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. I call it no gain there on the first down play. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Mixon. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Here's Trubisky to throw. Got a man. It's Ross complete. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Back now in Cincinnati. And we've got a dandy here. One-point game as we begin the fourth. On second and goal, one man stands in the backfield, and that's Mixon. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. 
Joe Mixon. Already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the Bengals are going to jump back in front. Uh, he's given him a little jolt and just gave him the lead there, but two TDs now in the game. And that jolt puts them in the lead. What a terrific job by him. He is carrying the ball and simply saying, I want to win. And now he's hoping his defense has that mentality as they try to hang on to that lead. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth-quarter lead. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes this up. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. The Texans on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. Here's Newton. And this is going to be incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the leg's still there. This has been a tough game. Now, this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Now second and seven from the 23. On the delay, it's Mixon. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. On third down, here's Harris. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Just week one, but already plenty of intrigue with the games going on, and this one no different as we come up on a first and ten. Mixon, and he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll get five out of the keeper, but now it's third down. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. And he finds Stills complete. A really nice gain of 25 yards. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Yeah, he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. A gain of six there on first. Throwing again on second down. Trubisky. And he's got his man on the out route. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Trubisky will come up here first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. This is Mixon on the draw. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. 
So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Marr able to put this one through. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. After some early struggles running the ball, they've really picked it up. Early it just seemed like there were no holes there. Now all of a sudden, the holes seem to be there. I don't know if that's just my imagination. And give them credit that they kept their confidence because sometimes when you get stuffed big in the running game early, especially for an entire half, it really makes you retreat a little bit, but not this group. They always have the confidence that they just get their assignments down, they get in sync with their runners, and off they went. From the 39, Newton. It's complete to Hopkins. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 25 yards that time. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play in the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. On second and 11 now, Newton, and his throw's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves them looking at a fourth down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Joe Mixon there out of the backfield. But now it's third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 17 at a Cincinnati first down. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and 10. A draw play for Mixon. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well conditioned. And he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. On first down, it's Harris. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 
On second down, Nixon fights through and now a crease. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Joe Mixon with now three week one touchdowns. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. And he keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, those, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. Mar now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here we go. Here we go. So Cam Newton in his offense, down by two touchdowns, 2.18 on the clock. They have all three timeouts and the two-minute warning, but they need two scores. Try to lay one up deep. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. William Jackson with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Turnover that just got him the football back, obviously a big one, because had they been able to score on the other side, this would have been a one-possession game. So you don't sense full relief here, then? No, I don't, especially with the ball this deep in their own territory, because you make a mistake, they've got it right back in prime position. They certainly do. So now, almost like a, you know, almost like a four-minute offense, right? Take care of this bad boy. Make sure the other team doesn't touch it, but move it with consistent gains. Bear down the clock and make them use their timeouts in this situation. Once again, they run with Mixon. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. On, and now Let's right out go. of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. On the run, it's Mixon. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action, a timeout here defensively. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. They'll run here with Mixon. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, Mixon. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give them seven there on the first down carry. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They go down to a knee, and the new campaign off to a good start. It's a win here in week one. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books, going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right out of the gate? Preseason behind us. All these games count now, don't they? Yeah, this is the exciting time with just one week gone and plenty of weeks to come. So for the Bengals, 
That'll be a happy locker room as they start the season 1-0. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for Houston, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.